Welcome to today's lecture on Mycobacterium tuberculosis and tuberculosis, TB. TB is a highly contagious disease that has affected humans for centuries. This lecture will cover the structure, transmission, immune response, pathogenesis, diagnosis, drug resistance, treatment regimens, management and control strategies, prevention in healthcare settings, tuberculosis and HIV co-infection, different forms of extrapulmonary tuberculosis, and the global epidemiology and public health impact of TB. By the end of this lecture, you will have a comprehensive understanding of TB. In this section, we will discuss the structure and characteristics of Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium responsible for tuberculosis. This bacterium has a rod-shaped morphology and a unique cell wall composition, which includes high levels of mycolic acids that make it appear waxy. The presence of these mycolic acids also allows Mycobacterium tuberculosis to evade the host immune system, aiding in its persistence and survival within the human body. Additionally, this bacterium possesses other fascinating features, such as the ability to form complex lipid-rich cell wall structures and survive within phagocytic cells, specifically macrophages. Next, we will discuss how Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium causing tuberculosis, spreads and the factors that increase the risk of developing the disease. The primary mode of transmission is through inhaling infectious droplets released by an infected individual when coughing, sneezing, or speaking. Close and prolonged contact with an infected person also heightens the risk of contracting tuberculosis. Conditions such as overcrowded living spaces, inadequate ventilation, malnutrition, and weakened immune systems further increase susceptibility to the disease. The video explores the complex immune response to Mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. It covers innate and adaptive immunity, including the activation of macrophages and neutrophils, and the subsequent activation of T-cells and B-cells. The outcome of the infection depends on the interplay between the host immune system and the bacteria. The process of tuberculosis infection begins with the inhalation of infectious droplets. The bacteria reach the lungs, where they are phagocytosed by immune cells. Instead of being eliminated, the bacteria survive and replicate within these cells, leading to the formation of granulomas. The bacteria can also spread to other parts of the body, causing extrapulmonary tuberculosis. The interaction between the bacteria and the host immune system determines the severity of the disease. In the diagnosis of tuberculosis, various methods are used, including smear microscopy, culture, and molecular techniques like PCR. However, each method has its limitations, such as low sensitivity or inability to provide drug resistance information. Challenges such as false negatives and the impact of HIV co-infection also affect the accuracy of diagnosis. In this section, we will discuss drug resistance in Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Improper use of anti-tuberculosis drugs has led to the emergence of drug-resistant strains, such as multi-drug-resistant tuberculosis, MDR-TB, and extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, XDR-TB. MDR-TB is resistant to isoniazid and rifampicin, while XDR-TB is resistant to additional drugs. Drug resistance complicates the treatment and control of tuberculosis. The standard treatment for tuberculosis involves a combination of four first-line drugs for six to nine months. Adherence is important to prevent drug resistance. Second-line drugs are used for drug-resistant cases. These regimens are complex and require monitoring. In the segment on the management and control strategies for tuberculosis, we discuss the core principles of TB control programs. These include case identification, treatment support, contact tracing, and implementing infection control measures to prevent the spread of tuberculosis. In healthcare settings, it's important to prevent the transmission of M tuberculosis. This involves implementing infection control measures, like administrative controls, training, occupational health programs, environmental controls, and personal protective equipment for healthcare workers and patients. In individuals infected with both Mycobacterium tuberculosis and HIV, the weakened immune system caused by HIV increases the risk of tuberculosis. Diagnosis, treatment, and management of this co-infection pose significant challenges. It is important to test for HIV early, provide antiretroviral therapy, and administer preventive therapy for latent tuberculosis infection. Collaborative efforts between tuberculosis and HIV treatment programs are crucial for improving patient outcomes and slowing disease progression. In this section, we will discuss the different forms of extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent of tuberculosis, can affect various organs and tissues outside the lungs. Common sites of extrapulmonary tuberculosis include the bones and joints, central nervous system, genitourinary system, and lymph nodes. Diagnosing extrapulmonary tuberculosis can be difficult due to the diverse clinical presentations and challenges in obtaining appropriate clinical specimens for testing. 
It is important to be aware of these manifestations to ensure prompt diagnosis and proper management. Tuberculosis is a significant global health issue with a high number of cases and deaths yearly. Socioeconomic factors influence the disease's spread, while efforts for elimination involve early diagnosis, treatment, prevention, international collaborations, funding, and advocacy. In conclusion, tuberculosis is a complex disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. We examine transmission, immune response, diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and global impact. Thank you for watching.